I understand that statement number 72 expands the use of fair value measurements to nearly all investments. What are the implications of this expansion? Becky, there are important implications for, for that because this is kind of one of the sleeper provisions that's in, in the standard where since everyone knows an equivalent FASB standard is out there, you know, we just kind of assume that, well, the impact is basically going to be the same as the FASB. But this is one of those provisions where the GASB really changes the definition of an investment uh, through the standard. And, and basically what it says is if a government holds an asset solely for the purposes of producing income or, or cash flows, then that asset should be considered an investment. So if a pension plan owns a building, an apartment building or a, or a commercial building, and only holds it for purposes of collect, collecting rents, then that, that building should be considered as an investment. Uh, but it could also be for, you know, a general purpose government or, or a utility might own timberland or, or uh, other assets that it, it, just, it just holds because it, it's getting the revenues off those and not planning on developing them from, for themselves or using them in government operations. Uh, those now also would fit into the uh, definition of investment. So there's clearly more things that are moving into, uh, into the investment category, and, and this GASB statement um, amends some of the, you know, the old, old, older GASB statements that had definitions of investments uh, for particular things, like GASB 25 for pensions and 31 for, for general governments. Uh, it, it tweaks those definitions to, to be more inclusive of these type of income-producing assets. So the important takeaway is that when you're thinking about investments, you can't just think about stocks and bonds or maybe commodities. You have to go a little further and, and look at a, a government's total investment portfolio.